we're going to be installing the Fast and Furious gaming box into the Fast and Furious Arcade 1UP. First, let's do a quick unboxing and see what we got. On the checklist, you'll see all the standard cables. I include the HDMI board and the USB fan in my kit. And at the bottom of the checklist is the URL to the install page, including things like this video that you're watching right now. Inside the box, you'll find written instructions, the stickers, and also a cheat sheet for knowing how to use our special features. The gaming box itself is inside. And the included parts, HDMI cable, various other cables, the HDMI board, and of course, the Fast and Furious encoder board. So let's take a look at how we install all this and get it going. The first step, of course, is to remove the deck from the arcade. Simple enough to do. If you put it together, you know how to take it out. Then we're going to flip it over and open it up. There are a few screws on the outside that we just need to remove. Now, when you pull this back cover off, be careful. There is a connector for the pedals plugged into the board and it's fairly short. I'll just try to show it to you. It's right here. So we need to pull that out. And then this power cable needs to come out as well. This tray is now free and clear. The next step is to simply disconnect all the connectors from the existing encoder board. You don't really need to worry about labeling them. It's going to be fairly straightforward to plug them back in. This particular one doesn't have a lot of glue on it, so you can see they're coming out pretty easily. Try not to pull on the wires if you can get a bit of the connector that's safer. So they didn't use a lot of glue, so that's kind of nice. Doing this for the first time on this board. There you go, everything's disconnected. There are three screws on here. Keep these three screws. We're going to be reusing them right away. That encoder board is not needed unless you change the mod back again someday. So now we will grab our new encoder board and the screws that we just removed and line them up with the posts and screw it back down. Don't over tighten them, just get them about right. Now we're ready to start plugging in the buttons. If you look at your instruction sheet, you'll notice that we've labeled the buttons A, B, X, Y, coin, and start. That was a bit of a change from how we originally built the board, so you'll notice that the A port, the red button, is way over here, and the start port is over here. In future versions of this board, we'll probably swap that to make it a little bit easier, but just so you know, those cables are just a little bit tight. Let's plug the wheel in. Wheel port's right there. Get that one out of the way first. Then we'll look at the A button. So the zip tie you can probably move down a bit, make it a little bit easier. This button here, the wire on our model anyway, is green and black. Just pull it so you know for sure which one you're dealing with. 
And this is the one that's going to have to stretch the furthest. All the way over to this blue port here. It does reach, it's just a little bit tight. The rest of these wires, we have another green wire there for B. Once we know for sure that's the one we got. And the B button is right there, the orange one. Then we have for X, this one right here. X is another orange port right top. Process of elimination, we have Y here is the green port. And coin is brown and black. And this last one that's left is rumble. And rumble is over on the side here. These are all labeled on the board when you take a look at it. Going over to the other wire harness. We will start with volume and start. So the volume button, you will notice, is on the extreme side of the deck. So that is the red, black, and brown cable. And the volume is right there. Plug that in. The blue, green, and black cable is the power switch. It will reach. It is getting a little tight here. You can always take the zip tie off if you want, but if you can avoid it, I would. These two plugs are possible to, to mix up. It won't harm anything other than, obviously, the labels on your switches will be wrong. So. So our start button is the orange and black cable here. Like I said, it is a bit tight, but it does reach without too much trouble. And that is the black port, brown port actually, right there. Last but not least, we have our special four-way shifter. And there's a port right here called shifter. Let's plug that in. So there's a number of other cables we're going to plug into this board before we're finished with it. And one of them is the pedal cable, which we need to get out of the box that we removed from the back. This white cable here is the pedal cable. We need to remove that from the plastic case. This black cable here is never used, so you can leave that or do whatever you want with it. So. There's just a little grommet there. We need to get in a position we can get the screwdriver to loosen that grommet. So, a number of different ways to try to do this. It's, if you push this little pin in there, you can pop it through. That's probably the easiest. Then you can take the plastic piece off, untangle the strain relief, pull it through. Now you have your pedal cable. You can still mount it into the door if you wish, but the other end we can put into our encoder board. We are no longer suggesting that people keep these plastic covers on the back of our mods much easier to get to um, check out things. And in this case, there's no way to mount the gaming box on the back of the wheel anyway. And so it's just far better to leave it off. There's really no reason to keep it on. So the pedal cable freed. It fits right where it says pedals right there. Now it's time to take the cables from our kit 
and plug them into the encoder board. I'm going to start with the voltage regulator. It has a 12 volt power out board right beside the power switch. I'm going to plug that in there. We're not going to attach this to the board. We're just going to let it hang there for now. The next port is for the harness cable. That has the three ends. We're simply going to plug that in right there. We will then take our white audio cable. One end is marked HDMI board. The other end is marked nothing, which means we need to plug that into the audio port of the encoder board right there. Two cables left. One is marked speakers on this end and has a JST connector on the other. And that is what needs to plug into the port marked speakers right here. Tight fit. There it goes. And last but not least is our USB cable. It is very nice and long. You probably don't need it that long. In fact, if you want, you could use a twist tie. Keep it shorter for now. The USB-C end will plug into the encoder board. Just like that. Now everything is connected and we're almost ready to plug it into the Fast and Furious cab. But we do suggest before you do that, to plug it into your PC and do a quick test of all the buttons. Okay, for this test, there's only two cables you need to worry about. You do want to plug your pedals in. So the pedal connector and the pedal connector. Make sure they are fully snapped together. Do that before you plug in the USB. As a general rule, it's a good idea. And then you're going to take the USB cable and you'll plug that into your laptop, MacBook, PC, whatever, desktop, whatever it is. Plug that in, hit a button, and there you go. We now have our Xbox 360 controller. And we can test all the buttons. We haven't put the labels on yet, but we know that's A, and that is A, that's B, and this is X, this is Y, this is coin, select, and that is start. Perfect. We can also test our steering wheel nicely, well calibrated. We can check our pedals. As we push the pedal up, it goes to almost 100, and the brake goes all the way to 100. They are actually in pretty good calibration. We will do a calibration in just a moment. So will let you know how to do that. The only thing left to check is our gear shift. Gear 1 is up. Gear 2 is down. Gear 3 is left bumper. Gear 4 is right bumper. That is the way it's designed. So we've tested all of the buttons and they're all working. It's a good idea to do that quickly. Make sure that we don't have any problems later on. So let's quickly show a pedal calibration. Even though these pedals are actually in pretty good calibration, they, we do suggest that this always gets done because it's the source of about 95% of the issues with the kit. These pedals aren't calibrated right. So I'm putting the pedals on the floor so that I can push both of them down. As you can see, I'm going to hold A and B down and I'm simply going to unplug the USB, hold it back in, one, two, let go of everything. Don't touch your pedals, just keep you can test the buttons once this is active. Now we're back. Now you can test your pedals. And look at that, right to 100. 
perfectly calibrated. That's all there is to calibrating. You just do it once. It's stored on the encoder board. One last thing to do before we install it back into the arcade is we should put on our stickers. It may actually be easier to do this before you install the encoder board, but totally up to you. We need to get the plexi out of the way. You can actually get it around the stick there. You get it sideways like that. That makes it a little bit easier to do. The first sticker is A. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. These should work to cover up the numbers. Try to get them straight in line. The Y button is a little tricky. We've decided we're not covering up the live. We're just putting it over here. Again, personal choice. The coin button will cover up music. Now we have this handy little sticker to show the sensitivity and dead zone adjustments and how to exit the game and things like that. You can choose to put this in a number of different places. We are just going to cover up this little logo right here. And that fits nicely. Gear shift numbers don't change. Start stays start. There's an extra little button, uh, extra little sticker here. You can do whatever you want with. Doesn't really fit there, but looks all right right there. Put your plexi back on, and now we're ready to throw it in the game. To reinstall the control deck, simply throw all the cables into the cab and refasten the control deck back to the frame with the four screws. On the back of the monitor, the PCB will need to be removed. We need to disconnect the speaker and the marquee and the Wi-Fi cables and then remove the six screws holding the PCB to the monitor. Now when we flip this up, you'll see there's two cables we need to remove as always. One is the backlight power board. Should pull out all right. The LVDS cable has a careful amount of pressure. And now the PCB is free to remove. So take your new HDMI board. Take your LVDS cable. The red pins always go to the left when you're connecting this. You need to make sure they line, the pins line up this way and they line up this way. We need to cover every single pin. Just be careful to do that properly. Just push it down on place. Double check that all the pins are covered. This cable, longer, easy, just plugs in right there like that. And now you can take two of the screws that you just got out of the PCB board, use the bottom two holes of our HDMI board, to fix it back into place. The ground screw should be okay right here like this. If you need to move that up to this one, go ahead. But I'm going to try to do it without having to move it. We're only using two screws because some monitors will need the top ones, but the Fast and Furious uses the bottom two. Sure, we've got a good, strong connection there. Everybody's good and solid. 
Now the last few steps, we can start connecting things. So there is a cable with a yellow label marked marquee. And of course the marquee cable we just disconnected, those two go together. There is also a white audio cable marked HDMI board that needs to plug into the HDMI board audio jack right there. There is one other cable marked with an orange HDMI board sticker. And that is the power for the HDMI board. And that plugs in there. There is another cable with a green sticker marked speakers. This plugs into the speakers. Do not plug the speaker port into the HDMI board. That will not work. The speakers plug into the speakers port cable. The audio cable marked HDMI board plugs in to the HDMI. We're almost out of cables in our kit. We have an HDMI cable that is included. We're going to plug the one end of the HDMI into the HDMI board. So last but not least, let's take our gaming box. We've already attached the fan to the front of it like that. We're going to peel the strips off the back for the adhesive. And there are three cables to plug in. We need to plug in the HDMI. We need to plug in the voltage regulator right beside the HDMI and the USB cable, which is plenty long. We're going to plug that in the top. So the trickiest part of this at this point is the voltage regulator. You could attach that to the top, but then anytime that you need to take the deck off, you're going to be a very short cable here and you'd have to disconnect it first. We're suggesting just letting it float. There's no reason that will be a problem. The cables are in there tight enough. Then we can, can position our gaming box on the side of the cabinet, anywhere about here. And then you're gonna to wanna to press down firmly, make sure the adhesive gets that good and solid. Use very good tape. And if you want to do some cord cleanup, you can, but leaving them longer is not a terrible idea because it's easy to forget one when you want to take the deck out and you all of a sudden pull it really tight. So, other than connecting power and the pedals, this mod's done. Nothing complicated about the pedal cable. You simply plug it into the pedal cable that's hanging down from our encoder board. The power cable, also not very complicated. This is usually in the door, the back panel door. And then you can plug your AC adapter into that. The other end, there are two connectors. One used to be for rumble. We don't use that one. We're just looking for the male barrel which we have a power in red label. Plug that in. Let's plug in the AC power and turn it on. Well, there you go. That's our new startup. We get sound right out of the gate with this box, which we think is great. The volume control, let's just double check that. We haven't been able to test that till now. Turn it right down. 
And turn it right up. It'll go pretty loud. The shifter one and two is up and down. So you can go through the menus. The A button goes into the menus. B button goes back out of the menus. We use shifter three and four for a lot of features in the game, whether it's nitro or items or, uh, or actually shifting. Sometimes some of the games will be mapped up and down to one and two and three and four is actually your manual shifting. So that works pretty well because you can just lock it in place like that. It actually keeps you further away from the steering wheel, which is kind of handy, especially when you're trying to hit nitro or start. Um, and of course, certain games, Daytona being the premier title, can use all four gears and that's fantastic. So we've added the Y button, a few games utilize that. All the updated details for the games list are on the Fast and Furious game list page and we encourage you to take a look at that so that you know how we've changed things a little bit to make it work for this deck. So this deck is basically PC upgrade ready because we have extra buttons on here already. It's going to be great and uh, we're looking forward to upgrading the build to a PC build down the road. So let's just take a quick look at, you can hold it like that as you can see. So to exit any game, it's coin and start. Those two buttons there, pops you right to the menu. And then you can go and find the next game to play. So there you go. That's our install for Fast and Furious. If you have any issues, of course, reach out to us. But overall, we think it's one of the easier ones to install. And hope you have fun with it. Thank <laughs> you.